it's really hot in here and if it's the same with you then staying hydrated with some kind of liquid is the best option and this reminds me of an amazing tool in photoshop and we are going to use it today and turn these two images into something like this hi guys it's dd again and you are watching dexplorian where everything is all about designing in photoshop and sharing the process with you and along with that we explore various tools techniques and tips and tricks which can improve your workflow and level up your graphic design game. Today we are going to work on an effect called the chromatic liquid effect and as the name implies there will be heavy use of one of my favorite tool in Photoshop, the liquify filter in combination with some textures, surreal colors and simple text. At first glance it might seem a little complicated but believe me the steps are real simple and easy to create so let's quickly hop onto the screen and start working on it. The first step will be obviously creating the canvas of our choice. I'm going with my usual FO size and then bring in the image onto the canvas. For this project, we're gonna need two images. With one, we will be creating the liquid effect and the other will be the one with our subject. Both the images I'll be using today are from pexels.com and do check out the description for the download links of both of them. This is the first image. I have chosen this image for a reason. I love the colors of the nature and I think there can't be anything more surreal and suiting to the eyes than what we get with the natural colors around us. There are other ways of doing it like using a texture and then applying a gradient map to that but I personally prefer using an image like this. Remember to convert your image into a smart object because otherwise if we apply a filter it will be a destructive process and will not be able to alter it any further. Ours is already a smart object here. So now we go to filter and then click on liquify. A new liquify workspace will open. If you've seen my earlier videos then you'd know that we have already used this tool many times to create different effects and if you are new on this channel then I would suggest to watch those videos also and I'll provide the links of those videos in the description for your convenience. By default the forward warp tool will be selected and this is the most used tool in the liquify workspace. There are other tools which are used for specific purposes and for that I will be making a separate video. In fact, I am thinking of making the next video on this topic covering all the options available on liquify tool. What do you say? Comments down below with your suggestions. We can adjust the size of the brush from here or we can use the shortcut, the right or left square bracket keys just as the normal brush tool. Then we have the density which is by default is at 50. You can adjust it as per your need. I generally keep it like that and never felt the need to change them except the brush size. And now we will start using the tool and using it is pretty straightforward. Just click and hold and drag as you like. The most amazing thing with this tool is it gives you complete freedom of how you want to create your effect and that's the reason I am so fond of this tool. I'll stop here for the time being and hit OK and now I'll move it little downward like this. We have to again work with the liquify filter and that's the advantage of converting the layer into a smart object because now the filter is also a smart filter and by double clicking here we can work on it as many times we want. Let's bring some orange textures here. Let's keep it like this for now. I'll rename this layer as liquid and then we will add a solid color adjustment layer and select a light shade, something with a hint of brown and drag it at the bottom and it will be our background. And now we'll bring the second image onto the canvas which has got our subject. We'll turn off the visibility of the liquid layer for the time being and then we have to remove the background and for that you can use any technique you are comfortable with. And after doing all the work, we'll get something like this. Let's rename the layer as subject and then turn on the visibility of the liquid layer. I'll resize the subject a little and position it like this. I will select both the layers together by holding the shift key and move it towards the left a little and work with the liquify tool again. We might have to work a few times to get it right. And after all the trials and errors, I think I am done. We are almost done, just a few more effects and if you are already in love with this liquify tool and finding this video interesting, then express your love by hitting the like button. 
and subscribe to the channel for more similar contents. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever I post a new video. Select the liquid layer and then go to filter again and this time click on filter gallery and now inside the texture folder here click on greens. You can adjust the intensity of the greens and then we have contrast here. I'll keep the contrast a little on the higher side and then if you want you can play with the green types here. I will keep it at regular and click OK. Let's add a little bit of blur and for that we go to filter again then blur and click on Gaussian blur. Adjust the radius sliders here to increase the amount of blur. I will keep it at 0.6 and hit OK. This was before and this is after. I want the liquid layer a little more vibrant and for that we will add a vibrance adjustment layer just above the liquid layer and adjust these sliders to increase the saturation and vibrance a little. But I want these adjustments to affect only the liquid layer so we have to clip it and for that we will hold the Alt or Option key and bring the cursor in between the layers like this and when the cursor changes into a bent arrow just click and now the adjustment layer is clipped to the liquid layer and it's not affecting the background. Now I will be adding a gradient map and click here to open the gradient editor. I will not be changing any color and keep it black and white but I will adjust this diamond like handle here and bring it towards the right to make it more dramatic. I want this gradient map to only affect the subject and the liquid layer and how can we achieve that? We will again select the subject and liquid layer and press Ctrl or Command G to group them together and then clip the gradient map to this group. Now I want the original colors of this liquid layer over here but this part should remain as it is. So what we will do is select the layer mask of the gradient map here and take the brush tool. Right click anywhere on the canvas to open the brush settings and select the soft round brush. Change the foreground color to black by pressing the X key, adjust our brush and start painting over these areas. If needed adjust the gradient further. The background looks very flat so we'll add some greens and blur to it and for doing that we first have to convert the layer into a smart object and then apply the filters. I'm done and lastly I'm gonna add the text. I'll be keeping the text simple and use the fonts called Carson and Bevers Nuev. These fonts are very minimal yet elegant and they are completely free and available on Google Fonts. You can place them anywhere you want. See what looks better for you. I'll be placing them here and lastly add some drop shadows to some of them. And our poster is ready. Did you like the poster? Please let me know in the comments down below. And if you are fascinated by this awesome liquefied tool and feeling the thirst to know more about it, then these videos will definitely quench your thirst. <laughs>